Former President Donald Trump is back in the courtroom this morning as his criminal trial nears its end. Both the prosecution and defense are delivering their closing arguments today. Trump is accused of falsifying records to cover up a so-called hush money payment in 2016. Of course, he says he's innocent. So for more analysis, I want to bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. All right, Ricky, um, closing arguments. What are what is the general purpose of the closing arguments? What are the goals of the prosecution and defense? The purpose of the closing argument is the time to sum up your side of the case, your reasoning for the jury, and to give them persuasive language that would have them vote with you as opposed to against you. It's the only time in a trial that a lawyer can really argue, because in opening statements, you are simply to, supposed to say what the evidence will show. I remember the wind being taken out of my sails, Anne-Marie. I was at a federal trial uh, in Georgia, and the great jurist, uh, Tony Alamo, said to the jury before closing arguments, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is the time for closing arguments. This is when the lawyers get to do their thing. <laughs> and anything they say is not evidence. And you got a little deflated <laughs> from that instruction. But it is the truth. You have to be authentic. The jury has to trust you as an advocate. So what does each side want to show the jury today? The defense goes first. The prosecution goes second and last because the prosecution has the burden of proof. So I think I'm going to do this a bit in the reverse order because we're looking at burden of proof. Here, the government has charged 34 counts of falsification of business records and that those records must have been falsified with Donald Trump, not somebody else, with Donald Trump's intent to commit or conceal another crime and to commit fraud. That's their burden of proof. And Anne-Marie, their burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. So one of my favorite things to do as a defense lawyer was to be able to look each juror in the eye and explain what the burden of proof was. So as a defense lawyer, what you want to remind the jury is that they might think he's guilty, they could guess he's guilty, they could suspect he's guilty, they could think most probably he is guilty, and that still is a verdict of not guilty. Because mm -hmm. what the verdict is, is either guilty or not proven guilty. Mm -hmm. The defense verdict is not a verdict of innocence. And it's interesting, because just as you agreed with me with your, mm, you could watch jurors' eyes light up because they understood something that they hadn't understood, which is that the burden of proof is solely on the government. So in this case, the government has a lot of hurdles here, Anne-Marie, because these are complex charges. Yeah, uh, you bring up a great point. I think we've talked about this sort of along the way that the charges, what he's charged with is Though it's very interesting, you know, what, what is alleged, this relationship with this porn star and this salacious, it has nothing to do with what he's actually charged with. It's actually, and even the cover-up, if you will, is not what he's charged with. It's the cover-up of the cover-up, sort of. It's, it's very complicated. Yeah. And the instructions, which will likely take place tomorrow rather than today, because both sides wanted a number of hours for their closing arguments. And the judge, though he could have put a time limit on both lawyers, decided not to. So we expect that the uh, defense will take the morning, the uh, prosecution will take the afternoon, and we expect that the charge, the instructions, will not happen to tomorrow. But even if the instruction should start late today, these instructions are what the jury has to consider when assessing the evidence. And you must find you've got um, 11 checks. You have then 11 invoices. And the remainder of the 34 counts um, are for ledger entries that are supposedly intended by Donald Trump 
to conceal or cover up a crime? What crime? Which is one of the questions. Is it simply the state misdemeanor of one person agreeing with one or more people to affect the state election by unlawful means? Well, what are those unlawful means? Is it a federal campaign violation? Is it a state election violation? Is it a state tax fraud. All of those things are before the jury. And the government has, does not have to prove those other crimes, Emory. The government has to prove that Donald Trump intended to commit or conceal those other crimes, even if they don't prove up the other crimes. So that's very helpful for the government. Uh, this is bound to be fascinating. I'm so happy that we have you, Ricky Kleeman, with us to guide us through it. Thank you very much.